What's up, Fantasy Endgame? It's Wednesday, and there's some big news that has gone down midweek that really came out of nowhere. Uh, although I know there's been some buzz about Stefan Diggs, but I, did you see him going to Houston? Because I didn't. Uh, Chris, we're going to have to talk about this because it's going to affect what we're doing. We draft every week, and we're going to do it again with you, against you. Join us right now on Sleeper. Jump in. And uh, we're going to draft him here to see exactly where does Stefan Diggs get drafted? Where does Nico Collins go? He's been a second round pick. Is he still going to go that high? I doubt it. And then what about Tank Dell? So let's find out, guys. You can uh, tell us what you think, of course. But uh, I mean, honestly, did you think that Houston was even on the radar as far as Diggs going anywhere? Did you think Diggs was even going to go anywhere? I did not think Diggs would actually go anywhere. I feel like the Bills were in a were, they're in a Super Bowl window here, although. They've really cleaned houses here. I know there. It, I know there was like some rumors with wide receivers potentially, like the the Texans trying to get different wide receivers, which always seemed a little strange to me because it's like I, I don't feel like wide receiver was an issue. I mean, it was after Tank Dell got hurt, of course, but I mean, when Tank Dell was healthy, he looked good. Nico looked good. Even Noah Brown looked pretty good. I mean, I didn't think wide receiver was like a huge need but obviously they want to like yeah cj stroud to the moon for sure they want to put as many weapons around him as they can and you know this is going to be a great offense in real life and it's fantastic for cj stroud but not good for fantasy right <laughs> it, there's no way it can be good for any of those individual receivers because they're going to be passing it plenty look i get each guy is going to be valuable but you know that target share is going to be now divided by three good receivers. Um, so, I, look, I don't want to start saying this round, this pick, whatever. I want to see what happens. I'm genuinely curious where the fantasy community are. Extremely smart and sharp fantasy community um, puts these guys. So uh, we're we're full. That didn't take long. I think it took about two and a half seconds. Our draft is full. Now, for those who don't know, we do a 12-team uh mock draft every single week and this is going to be a half ppr so we do this on sleeper also good news is this possible is the adp updated it looks like it looks like it's pretty updated i mean you got cd lamb tyree kill justin jefferson jamar chase and monra i mean i still don't see christian mccaffrey at the number one but maybe it's i don't know maybe that's because other john took him but yeah it at least looks better it at least looks better <laughs> it it definitely looks better but now I got updated again because Stefan Diggs gone. What does that mean for the Texans? What does it mean for Buffalo? That's the other part of the fallout is we're all talking about Diggs and, and te Texans. Does Josh Allen take a hit? I mean, he doesn't have a number one receiver anymore. His number one receiver right now is uh, Khalil Shakir. Or hey, Elton don't disrespect Kate. my man Curtis Samuel like that. Oh, yeah. I, forgot Curtis <laughs> Samuel. I mean, he's got to um, take – I think he's got to take a little bit of a hit, right? But also, you can't. I can't believe the Bills are going to go into next season with Curtis Samuel, Khalil Shakir, and what, like a a day three wide receiver or something, or a late day two wide receiver? Like that can't be the plan, right? Can it? <laughs> I seriously doubt it. Um, I. Like the everyone's talk about the Buffalo Bills drafting a receiver anyways. Not that they have a super high draft pick, although trades always happen. Uh, some people were saying, well, maybe late in first round, they get like a Brian Thomas Jr. type. Is he for sure going to be a number one receiver in the NFL? I, I don't know. I A lot of people project it, but I, he's not exactly a can't miss prospect like a no. Martin Harrison Jr. or maybe a Malik Neighbors. So I don't know. Um, well, I'm going to go, which by the way, I, I don't think I've been able to, to jump in front of you yet this, this preseason. So I did. <laughs> I'm a good Jamar Chase. Uh, Jamar Chase at that point, that's very good value. I guess I got to go with Reese here. And then the yeah, other. The Bills, that's. Well, is there a trade coming in for Ayuk, T. Higgins, something like that? I mean, they're definitely you, you can't um, 
just completely say no, like that it couldn't happen. You got to think, you got to think the Bills, like they've probably seen the writing on the wall. They probably knew Stefan Diggs. They weren't going to bring him back. They were going to try to trade him if they could. So you got to think they have back some kind of backup plan um, in place. I'm trying to look at what picks the Bills have this year. So they have 10 picks in this year's draft. They have the, let's see, they have the number 28, number 60, two round fours. So, I mean, maybe like, maybe the number 28. And I think they have two seconds next year now. So maybe they could do like the number 28 this year, one of the seconds next year, and then a later one for a guy like Ayuk, a guy like Higgins, something like that. Got to think they're going to do something though. Yeah, uh, chance of T. Higgins being traded, I think, have to go up now. Not scared T. You know, the Bengals make it sound like they aren't in a hurry to move him, that they don't want to. But if a team like Buffalo puts out, you know, a strong enough offer, why would they say no? So Yeah, that's the thing. I think, like, if a team's going to give you a, a good enough offer, you, you got to take it. You got to take it. All right, so uh, let's see. One, two, three. So this four, is five, so six. this is the part of the draft where it's going to get really interesting now because this is a lot of times where we started to see like Nico go, maybe Tank, maybe even Diggs. Where do we see these guys go now? <laughs> yeah, and don't forget uh, Rasheed Rice. <laughs> who, uh, uh, who knows what's up with that? Like that story is going to go away for a little bit. He's finally look. It, I, I don't understand why it took. Basically, a, a car accident for his for his value to drop that far, but it, his value at least has finally dropped. Um, as it probably to where it should have been this whole time, honestly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, a lot of times right around here is where Nico would go. Yeah, right around here. And then Tank would be like late second, early third, right around that range. Diggs, same thing, kind of that early third. And this is just, this is a tough spot of the draft anyways. I just feel like, man, like the second round this year feels very tough. Very tough. Uh, I, I honestly don't. Don't know which direction to go. I don't. I, I think it's surely like we have seven running backs taken. I I know there's not a running back I feel deserves to go here anymore. Saquon Barkley's not available here anymore. I, uh, okay, I'm gonna just go with my guy Devontae Adams. Ooh, ooh. I know. All right, you're still, know. you're still on Adams, but this is a tough. It's tough here. It's tough in this part of the draft for sure. There's wide receivers where it's like. Yeah, I, I like them, but they feel like even Chris Olave feels reachy to me. Even Drake London feels reachy to me. Harrison feels reachy. Even though I like these guys, they feel reachy, but so do the running backs here. <laughs> like everybody feels reachy right now. <laughs> like everybody feels reachy. Yeah, it, exactly. Uh, well, really it's it's possible like we did talk about this um before the show do you think that this has anything to do with them worried about tank not being ready or concerned about him you know being too fragile or something like that i mean it certainly could be that certainly is something i think you have to consider is maybe they they i mean look they know better than we do how his recovery is going right how he how he's whatever maybe they do know something um But I mean, I don't think Tank's like gonna miss a season, right? Like, no. I mean, so I, mean, I don't know. I mean, they, they gave up a pretty decent, you know, second round pick for Diggs. I, I know they got a fifth and a sixth back, but I mean, really, how often do fifth or sixth round picks really pan out in the NFL? Um, remember, like Amari Cooper, they only got a fifth for Amari Cooper, only got a fourth for Keenan Allen, who just had a much better season than Stefan Diggs by miles. Um, so giving up a second is a pretty hefty haul. So I, I don't know. And the other thing I, I wonder about is because 
you know, Nico is a is a true X wide receiver, right? He's going to pretty much predominantly line up on the line of scrimmage. But that's also what Diggs mostly does, right? He mostly is going to line up in the X on the line of scrimmage. Are they going to move Diggs to flanker, to more of a flanker role, which may maybe that'll be better for him at this stage of his career? Or, like, how are these guys going to coexist? Yeah, very strange, very strange move all around. Um, and again, I think, like I said earlier, I think it's going to be great for the Texans, right? It's going to be great for CJ Stroud. It's going to be great for that offense. Don't know if it's going to be great for fantasy. And, you know, Tank, obviously going to be the slot guy there. And, you know, he's more of a yak guy. I don't think he suffers too much. Uh, Diggs moving to flanker, like you said, that makes the most sense by far. Um, yeah. But, again, for each Nico and Diggs, you've got to think it, it puts them a, a little bit farther down for fantasy. Stroud, that'll be the next thing we talk about is how high is going to be too high on him? <laughs> Are people going to be too high? Yeah, I've already I've already seen people. I mean, look, it might make sense, but I've already seen people saying C.J. Stroud over Patrick Mahomes in Dynasty, which I mean, it might make sense. You're getting uh, what? How big? How big of an age discount are you getting with C.J. Stroud over? Um, you know, over Mahomes right now. Mm-hmm. All right, I guess I'm going a veteran at the position. Got Mike Evans with Devontae Adams. Very veteran there, but I do like Mike Evans. I feel like Mike Evans being very undervalued, as he is every year in every draft, right? It's like it's like he's going to get a 1,000 yards, he's going to score 10-plus touchdowns, and he's going to go in the third or fourth round of every draft. <laughs> like, Pretty much. <laughs> so I'm also taking a slight chance. Hopefully I get one of the running backs I like on the way back. I do see that Team 12 has two running backs already. Team 10 and 11 each have one running back, so hopefully they don't snatch them all up. I don't know. I don't know if you have to worry about Ale taking a running back. No. We'll see. No. And I although he had, you think he didn't he go anchor RB last week? So maybe, maybe. Hmm. Uh, Derrick Henry. Well, look the the ranking they had him uh, here on Sleeper again. This seems to be very recently updated. I swear I saw it look like uh, sixty something, but he's not making it out of round three in most of our drafts. No. But All right, well, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'm taking him that early. I think, I think Derrick Henry will be will be good this year. He'll score probably ten plus touchdowns. Maybe get close. To, like, he'll probably be very similar to what he was last year, honestly, yeah. with maybe a little bit more touchdown upside. I don't know if that's third round for me, but I, I'm not like totally off Derrick Henry. And we did just get Nico Collins, the first Texan drafted, Nico Collins. By Ale in the third. How do you feel? How do you 3. feel? 3.9. I, I think that's fair. Uh, honestly, the early second still felt a little early for me. But again, it's like, well, uh, how do you, you know, pick between like Olave, London, Nico, those number one receivers on not dynamic offenses necessarily? So uh, I think this is more reasonable. Now, Rashi Rice, we saw go at the 311. Still feels a little early to me there, not even having to do with the whole car thing. Yeah, I I feel like I, I don't know. I don't know about Nico anywhere in the third. I, I'm even questioning the fourth. Just because I think Nico's a great player. And I think honestly, I know it's gonna like probably ruffle some feathers. Nico might be a better wide receiver than Stefan Diggs at this point of their career. Because Nico Collins is a very underrated, very good wide receiver. He just got stuck with horrendous quarterback play for two years and nobody got to see it. And then finally he got a quarterback last year and everybody got to see it. But the problem is this is fantasy football. And the most important thing for wide receivers in fantasy football are targets. And even though they're going to probably be a pass-heavy team, you're talking about three good pass catchers. We're not going to see Diggs getting double-digit targets. We're probably not going to see Nico getting – like none of these guys are going to get double-digit targets very often. It's going to spread around. I, I don't know. I mean, man, it's just – how many times have we seen an offense support three good fantasy wide receivers? I, I can't even think of, like, the last one, really. I can't even think of one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I got – I'm going Nico over Diggs, like we pretty much all have been doing, most of us. But um, 
it's, oh, it's yeah. interesting now. It's, it's a little different reasoning, but yeah. uh, I think that's fair just because, again, am I putting Rishi Rice over him? No. Cooper Cup, nah, I still prefer Nico. T. Higgins, I actually am more interested in now, and I still think he was a good value. All right, thank you for not taking running back. Is James Cook going to be the leading receiver for the Bills now? <laughs> oh, come on. They have Kid K. They have Curtis Samuel. Um, But I will say, I think I actually do did agree with uh, Clapping Cheeks today, which doesn't happen very often. When he said, I'm just drafting whichever Texans wide receiver is, is being taken last. That's where I'm at. Whoever's going latest, that's the guy I'll, I'll take. If any. If any. Yeah. That's always a good policy. Go for the value. I feel like it's almost surely going to be Tank Dell on a recurring basis. Some people are doing the Tank versus Nico argument. And now I feel like Tank will be probably more like a fifth round pick. Yeah, I agree. It probably, it probably will be Tank. And I think the fact that we're in round five now and we still haven't seen another Texans wide receiver is just makes me feel like that's too early. Like the Nick, I don't like is Nico gonna be two rounds better than Diggs and Tank? Two rounds? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. I, I'm I think surprised guys... honestly. I thought Diggs would be taken by now. Well, Maybe in maybe in other drafts he will be, but we've talked down Diggs all off season, and now he, <laughs> you know what I mean. So maybe in other drafts he would be. Uh, yeah, Arjun. I don't. I'm pretty sure that wasn't an auto draft. Are you sure you need a backup quarterback this early? Is he? It, it doesn't say he's auto drafting. Yeah, why is he taking another quarterback? I almost feel like I should swap that. Yeah, yeah, that that's. Uh, he was in the chat earlier. Arjun, I, I don't know about that pick. Uh, maybe you forgot. Give him. We're getting you digs. Sorry. I'm giving you digs. Come on, we can't have that. Clayton with the fire take. Tank more talented than Nico and Digs. I mean, he's different. He's different. Like, he probably is better after catch than those guys, but he's not nearly the polished route runner or wide receiver that those guys are. I mean, maybe, okay, Diggs. Oh, I'm very curious when uh, Matt Harmon starts breaking down uh, the vets and he does Diggs. I'm curious to see how much, like, his his – game dropped off last year yeah well it, it's hard to even say too much and you're saying like i'm all saying tank has the rapport i think nico has more of a rapport because he was actually yeah, out like, there wait. the entire season you know i know did, did 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 nico not have rapport did i miss the like the, the second half of the season and the playoffs when he was like going off every week basically like the only one who doesn't have rapport with CJ Stroud right now is Stefan Diggs. He's the only one that doesn't have rapport. Yeah, that right there is a good argument against Diggs early, is that he's the new guy. They already have two good receivers, and it might take time for him, you know, to acclimate. And we see all the time, no matter how big the name, the big name receivers, they'll go somewhere. And it just, you know, it just doesn't happen right away. It might happen eventually, but you know, it's just, uh, it takes time. And chemistry does matter. New situation, new everything. Uh, sure. so that was a, that I love was here. Thing I was we have three receivers, so why not? Ah, oh, you sniped me. <laughs> All right, let's just keep going with the wide receivers and have PPR. Um... I don't like any of these running backs enough. That was another thing I was saying in the Discord. How often have we seen a 30-year-old wide receiver coming off a down season 
going to a new team and then all of a sudden becoming like his old vintage self again. Like I can't even think of one. Yeah, I mean, we a lot of people now will kind of chalk up uh, Diggs' bad second half to just uh, he wasn't happy, right? Or there's right. beef between him and Josh Allen, which apparently there was. Yeah, and the offensive coordinator. And all. But we can't just assume that Diggs is still in his prime in terms of efficiency and that he's going to be as good as he was, even if he somehow gets close to the amount of targets he got you know, before last year with Buffalo. So Which you won't. <laughs> I think it's fair to say it could be both that maybe there were some personal issues there and some, you know, things maybe Diggs was dogging it or something. I'm not saying he was, but maybe like people are going to say that, right. He wasn't motivated. He wanted out of Buffalo. Um, he still did get targets down the street. Yes. Like it's not like they just didn't pass to him at all. So maybe it's possible that he also has lost half a step or something. Right. And it's like, it's one thing to say like, okay, he, he was dogging it. He didn't want to play. Well, he just decided in week 10 that that's it. I'm done. Cause he was great weeks one through nine. <laughs> right. Like he just decided in week 10. Nah, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. I've had enough. I don't know. Like we're talking about a 30 year old wide receiver. I mean, it happens like the most like Deandre Hopkins, 30 year old wide receiver went to a new team. Did not get better. Julio Jones, 30-year-old wide receiver, at, went to a new team. Did not get better. Like, it's, it's – I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's just very, very – not very often that, you know, these guys bounce back by going to new teams. Like, that's rarely the, the solution. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be – again, not completely off, but – um I'm probably not going to get much digs uh, anywhere this year other than underdog best ball. Well, William, here you go. Wondering where's Stroud going? He's gone. Uh, Ronnie took him, and this is round six. He went after Anthony Richardson, but still before Joe Burrow, before Dak and Kyler Murray. So, I mean, that's not big difference from where he was being taken before in terms of quarterback rank, but it is definitely earlier in terms of overall ADP. Yeah, and I would have. I probably would have taken him here if he fell to me. Honestly, there you go. What's up, Young Money? Julio and D Hop. Um, okay, fair point. D Hop went to Tennessee with uh, Ryan Tannehill, not um, not CJ Stroud. And Julio, though, come on, Julio could barely stay on the field, and he definitely lost like several steps. I mean, didn't Julio go to Tom Brady? With Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Oh, there you like go. It's, That's it's true not all it's not always like it's not always about just the quarterback. He's now he's now going from an offense where he was the only guy really getting significant targets to an offense where he's not gonna be the only guy getting significant targets. Like again, if Diggs is getting six to eight targets a game, and even that seems high. Like what you know what I mean? Like how good is he really going to be getting six to eight targets? This is a guy who's getting 10, 11, 12 targets a game. Like, I don't know. And then, and then you have to hope that he wasn't really dust last year that he actually just decided I'm not going to try anymore or something or whatever. Josh Allen just sucked or whatever, whatever your reason, you know, whatever your thing is like, I don't know. I mean, just go back. Just really just name me a, a, a 30 plus year old wide receiver who had a down year went to a new team and all of a sudden revived his career. Like this is the NFL. <laughs> like you know, 30, 30 like I hate I hate to break it to you like especially as a guy who's older like 30 years old is like you're getting really old in the NFL. You're getting really old. Yeah, receivers uh football players in general that are skilled players but receivers usually don't uh age gracefully. <laughs> it's not better with age. I look like, he'll still be effective obviously Texans think so but I mean what's okay what's the earliest you feel you could take him fifth round yeah I need mean, all three of them fifth round is the earliest I can go on any of them because again like it's hard enough for an offense to support like AJ Brown and Devonta Smith it's hard enough for an offense to support um I don't know what's another offense with two good fantasy wide receivers you know what i mean like 
And now you're asking him to support three. And I get it. He's getting Stroud. Like William say, I agree, but he's getting Stroud. Okay, but he's also going to a team with two other very good receivers. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if it was just, like, if it was just, uh, like, if last year it was just, you know, Noah Brown and some scrubs on Houston and then Diggs went to uh, Houston, I'd be like, yeah, I totally agree. He's getting C.J. Stroud. This is awesome. But he's getting C.J. Stroud with Nico Collins and Hank Dell. Like, you're talking about three dudes. Yeah, Chase and Higgins. Thank you. Um, there's others. But, like, name me one with three. Name me an offense that supported three good fantasy wide receivers where one or two of them didn't get injured at some point during the season. Like, three guys all year long, all good. Like, I don't know. Fifth, sixth round. For all of them. It's not just Diggs either. Nico, Tank. I'm not taking any of them for the fifth round. I'm just not doing it. Like, it's just very rare that... A team with three good wide receivers, they all can be good. Now, if we hear something like Tank Dell may not be ready for a long time, maybe he's recovering slower. Okay, then maybe I'll change my tune on Nico and Steph and Diggs. It's like, okay, maybe it'll just be the two of them. But for right now, we got to assume it's all three. And I just don't see how three, for as good as CJ Stroud, like could Patrick Mahomes support three good wide receivers? I don't think so. <laughs> maybe. Not, not really. Uh, y'all just took every receiver that was in my queue just got taken like in a row that end of that round. <laughs> I think all the running backs that were in my queue already got taken. All right, we'll make this pick, and then somebody had a question about Zamir, so we'll get to that. Uh, man, I'm uh, not loving this, but. I'm still on JSN having a a better season. Okay, so let's uh, go back a little bit. I know I saw it. Well, we got All this right. one from Young Money. Oh, oh okay, oh, sorry. Okay, we'll go. Well, I was gonna continue on. Just the got is Amir a top 15 running back if the Raiders just don't do anything? Probably. 15, like 15 to 20 range. Because he's not going to probably catch enough passes to be a consistent, you know, week in, week out RB1. He'll have some RB1 weeks because touchdowns for sure. Um, yeah, I'd say probably 15 to 20 in that range. Feels fair. Yeah, the... Uh... Pass catching, they did target him, you know, when he was the guy there. Um, they did target him. It's not like he was a non factor as a pass catcher, but still, he's not going to be a guy who just you know, like eats in the third round role, right? And Madison right. being there, that makes me feel better about Zamir White kind of being the lead guy, I'm not worried about Madison. So, yeah, um, not worried about Madison. I think he could be. I think he could be top 15, but I, I'll be realistic as much as I love the Zeus. I'll, I'll say that's probably his ceiling. And then I thought, you know, Young Money asking this question, uh, is it possible that Nico and Tank aren't that good and Stroud them made them look borderline elite? I don't know if any quarterback can make a bad wide receiver look borderline elite. I mean, yeah. But certainly, I mean, having – we know, obviously, that having Stroud was a big boost because we saw Nico without Stroud, you know. Obviously, the quarterback's important. But even if we assume this, let's say we assume like, hey, Nico and Tank were just are just good wide receivers and Stroud made them borderline elite. I'm going to say the same thing I keep saying. It's fantasy. They're they're good enough to command targets. It's not going to be Stefan. This is look, Gabe Davis is not a good wide receiver in terms of like being a a target type what targeted wide receiver again. If he's good at blocking and in the locker room all stuff great. That's awesome. But for fantasy, he's not the type of wide receiver that's going to command a ton of targets. Either is Khalil Shakir. So Diggs got all the targets there. Nico and Tank are at least good enough to demand a good amount of targets, which means there's only so many targets to go around. They're not going to throw the ball 60 times or 70 times a game where all these guys can get 10 plus targets. Not to mention Dalton Schultz is still there. Pretty sure Noah Brown is still there. You're going to have mixing out of the backfield. I mean... I just can't do it before fifth round for any of these guys. And it's not because it's not because 
digs maybe dust it's it's just because it, it's very hard to support three good fantasy wide receivers no matter how good the quarterback is yep exactly right so i would say i still have nico as the number one houston receiver I'm like reluctantly maybe digs and then tank but I would still take Nico in round four, maybe late round three, but uh, Diggs, I'm probably just not taking. <laughs> are you as low? Are you as low as NMB on Diggs? If Diggs was fourth round value as a wide receiver one for Josh Allen, not taking him earlier than the seventh now. That that almost doesn't matter because somebody will take him before round seven. I mean, if he's there in the seventh, I sure. I might take him. I mean, that really more depends on who, what other receivers are available. I mean, look at the receivers who went in round seven in this draft. Um, I mean, am I taking him? Look, at the receivers I was ready to to pounce on in round se- in round seven, which didn't fall to me. Hollywood Brown, um, and again, that's regardless of the Rasheed Rice thing. Amari Cooper usually goes round five. Jaden Reed, Deontay Johnson. I, I might take Diggs over Christian Watson, okay, just because Christian Watson, you know what that is. It's, Big roll, <laughs> but uh, I would I wouldn't take digs over any of those other guys. Yeah, and now I saw this from uh, Wario get good because when I asked like three wide receivers, Gronk, Evans, God, Godwin, Brady, um, it's a tight end, and it does it matters because like for Gronk, first of all, I don't even know how good was Gronk really that year. I mean, he had some nice games. I remember I had him that year. He had some nice games, but. Remember, tight ends, for a tight end, five catches, 50 yards, and a touchdown is an exceptional week. It's an exceptional week for a tight end, right? Like, for a wide receiver, that's good. Like, you'll take that. You know what I mean? Like, even even five catches for 50 yards for a tight end is a good week. You don't want your wide receivers getting five catches for 50 yards. Ten fantasy points? Like, you can get ten fantasy points from plenty of wide receivers. So the difference is when you say like Gronk, Evans, Godwin, yes, that's three pass catchers, but not three wide receivers. And it de- definitely matters. It definitely matters. Like, again, if, like I said, if it was just, let's say, Tank Dell, Noah Brown, Dalton Schultz, if those were the only guys there, yeah, I'd probably be higher on Diggs or at least, you know, like, feel like, yeah, okay, he's draftable. But we're talking about three wide receivers. And don't forget, they also have Dalton Schultz, who had like 600 yards last year and however many touchdowns. And, commanded targets too it's just a lot of mouths to feed in this passing game now and then somebody else said again i'll just say george kittle uh, a tight end and george kittle how up and down is george kittle and he's the tight end yeah all of those guys wind up with good numbers but also so like i said it's like each week it's a different guy right those guys are not consistent all very volatile and debo and kittle have missed a lot of games um so yeah, it's hard. Not apples to apples. The look, the the Tampa Bay one, the Gronk Evans, whatever. Let's just remember that they had the differences. CJ Stroud, I love CJ Stroud, right? You know this. I had right. him as the number one quarterback yeah. coming out of that class, for sure. They had Tom Brady, the best quarterback of all time. And it still pains me a little bit to say that, but Tom Brady is the best quarterback of all time, and that he led the league in pass attempts for every year he Didn't was in he Tampa. Break- didn't he break the record? Like, doesn't he hold the record for most pass attempts in the season from that year? Yeah. I don't think Houston's going to throw it that much. Okay. But besides no. that, okay, San Francisco, that would be a realistic comparison. But, again, you're talking about a tight end, not three receivers. And even though Tank is going to play the slot, it's not exactly the same. And Debo, let's not forget his best season. A lot Half his touchdowns came on rushing touchdowns. And he does a lot of end arounds. It's a different kind of offense. So, I don't, I don't feel like that's – a straight up comparison either. Yeah, and not not to mention his best season was when Brandon Ayuk was in the doghouse for half the first half of the year and was barely seeing the field, remember? <laughs> that too. Yeah. Um it's just hard. The point is it's hard for all three to to be really high end for fantasy. Is it gonna be one guy who stands out more above the other? I don't feel like it's that kind of situation, really, because as much as we like Nico, I mean, is there another level to his game? Probably not. I mean, but is there another level to step on Diggs' game at this point? Not a, no. Is there another level to tank? Maybe. Maybe Lower Tank's level. a guy who could have another level. Um, 
But again, I think you said it best with the San Francisco players. It's going to be like, there's going to be a week where Nico goes off, Tank goes off, Diggs goes off. There's going to be some weeks where none of them do. Maybe there's going to be a weeks where a couple of them are good and one's bad. Like, that's how it's going to be, right? That It's just how it's going to be because it's, again, it's just hard for three guys to all be fantastic week in and week out in the same offense at as receivers. Now, if you're talking like if you're talking about a running back, a wide receiver, a tight end, that could definitely happen, right? Like something like that. But when you're talking about three wide receivers, it's just very, very, very hard. Look, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Stroud is just so good, so good he can do it. Okay, I need to pay more attention to who's actually on the board here. But I just feel like for me, it's just, I don't know, not worth it. Yeah, but get, uh, I don't want to forget getting back to what you were saying. Um, what about Dalton Schultz now? He just re-upped to stay in Houston. I mean, is, is he worth drafting? I mean, no. I, I No. Like, again, he's going to have, like, um, he's going to get a, uh, He's going to have a week at some point next year. Maybe it'll be week one. Maybe it'll be week four where he catches, you know, he's the number one receiver that week. And then people are going to run out and grab Dalton Schultz and put him in their lineups. And he'll probably, you know, because again, it's hard enough. It's, it's hard for teams. Like look at George Kittle, how up and down he is. Like it's hard for teams with two really good, like Dallas Goddard, same thing. Like, Teams are two really good high-end wide receivers. It's hard enough for the tight end. Now we're talking about three. It's just, it's not a good, I just don't see how it can be a good situation for fantasy, no matter how good CJ Stroud is. Yeah. Good for Stroud. Great for Stroud. Great for Stroud. Not better for Diggs. Definitely worse. Little, I, I don't know. I'm saying it's a little bit worse for Nico, but I don't think it's like the kiss of death for his fantasy value. I think Tank won't have as many big games, but he's obviously still somebody you could put in a lineup every week. I just consider him more like, preferably more like a number three receiver, but he's going to be drafted probably like a number two receiver by a lot of people. Um, Dalton Schultz, yeah. he's, he's off pretty much off the board for me. Yeah, I don't think I'll be drafting any Dalton Schultz. And William's saying, like, the, whoops, William's saying he likes content. Good luck to draft. I'm not trying to like, you know, say like you're wrong because look, I'm I'm wrong plenty, and I could be wrong. Maybe Stefan Diggs is going to be a monster this year, and I'm going to regret it. Or Nico or Tank. It's just, I just tend to be stay away from situations like that because I just know, you know, I, I can't think of a single instance where three wide receivers. You know, all were good in fantasy on the same team. I'm, I'm probably forgetting one, but maybe. Yeah, it's it, it, it's hard. Um, even the best offenses. I mean, again, not counting a running back who catches passes. Not the same situation. I don't know if a tight end really counts, but um, yeah, you're really only going to have two guys who could be big and then the third is going to be like a complimentary piece. Yeah. And the thing is it might change on any given week, right? Right. That's, that's more likely what it is, which, uh, so I was trying to throw this up because we just finished talking about that. I don't know if you heard that CSIS live, but yeah, Schultz, um, uh, I doubt he'll get drafted here. Don't think he needs to be drafted. If it's a deeper league as depth, maybe. But look, there's going to be some tight ends with upside over him. It's not a great rookie tight end class, so you're not going to see a lot of new faces that jump up. Um, but he's got to take a, probably the biggest hit in that offense. Yeah, exactly. At least. Yeah, best ball as your tight end two, tight end three, sure. But in, in like a. Redraft league like this? No, nah, not drafting Schultz. Yeah, this is a stack. It's supposed to be a really good receiver class. Uh, let's see what Buffalo does. I mean, they have to draft somebody early, second round at the latest, because all the big free agents are gone. It's either that or they're pulling off a huge trade for a guy like Higgins, um, yeah. which at this point is definitely not going to be surprising. I mean, I don't think anybody, the Diggs thing, we'd heard a lot of noise about it. 
Like the Keenan Allen trade, I, I came to me out of nowhere. Right. I did not see that coming. Yeah, that, that came a little bit out of nowhere. I thought they might just release him to save the cap space, but obviously trading him is even better. Um, Yeah, got to think. Yeah, so Higgins got to think something traded. there. And I agree. I think a second for Diggs is fantastic for the Bills. Again, we're talking about Amari Cooper was like 27 years old when Dallas traded him for a fifth. <laughs> like, you know, Keenan Allen, who just had a way better season than Stephon Diggs, um, just went for a fourth. Now, granted, he's, I think, 32, and Diggs is only 30 or 31 or whatever he is. Um, so, okay, so here we go. So, Brian Looper says, in 2008, Fitzgerald, Bolden, and Breston had 1,000 yards each. Okay, so there's one, 2008. Steve Preston, man, pulling out the names. Brian Looper, stats, digging in the stats. Okay, so there you go. There's one. Yeah, I think uh, that was that. Was that when they had Kurt Warner, like, uh, the, toward the end of his career? It must have been, right? Yeah, I think so. But, you know, 1,000 yards does not a fantasy stud make because I'm, I'm no. curious now, and I'm going to look it up is how many touchdowns and how many catches he was more like the field stretcher because you know larry fitzgerald played the slot sat underneath bolden was like their you know the big receiver so breston maybe got a thousand yards but you know not to not to pick a fight there yeah three touchdowns yeah Although he, he, had, had uh, he had 77 at that so 177 three so he had like not even 200 PPR points. Anquan Bolden. Anquan Bolden did have 11 touchdowns. Wow, nice. And Fitz had 12. So Bolden, Fitz 96, 14, and 12. That's fantastic. Bolden was pretty good. So who's who's the Steve Breston? Tank Dell? <laughs> Who gets the Steve Breston role? Yes. I guess he would have to be. Um, yeah. Swaggy P insists that Buffalo does not want T. Higgins. Why Why wouldn't you want T. Higgins, though? He's yeah. pretty good. The thing is, is, are the Bengals willing to trade T. Higgins to the Bills? That's the question. If the price is right, why wouldn't they? I mean, if the price is right, sure. But then you probably have to see T. Higgins in the playoffs. Maybe they don't um, care. Like you got me uh wow, it got me curious now, and I love because we were still playing fancy football back then. So in 2008, not that anybody asked, in 2008, Larry Fitzgerald was the number two fantasy receiver in PPR. Anquan Bolden was the number seven on the same offense. Number two and number seven. And Steve Breston, maybe I should maybe I should uh walk back what I said. He was wide receiver twenty five. That's actually, I mean, that's actually pretty good. And we have, yeah, we do see, like I said, like we can see two, two wide receivers be very good in the same offense. We've seen it plenty of times. That's, I mean, three top 25 receivers in the same offense. So I guess it has been done. It can be done. Are they going to throw it at that much? We'll see. How much did the Cardinals throw it that year? Uh, I'm going to guess a whole lot. Okay. That's my pick though. Uh, let's see. Um, Kurt Warner attempted 600 passes, so yeah, a lot. Yeah. Especially for 2008, 600 passes in 2008. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nowadays, you look at that and it's not too much, but yeah, back then that was a lot. Uh, I haven't really been paying attention to who's been getting picked here, so let's go with this. You know, who's the leading receiver for Buffalo in 2008? <laughs> Lee Evans. Remember Lee Evans? Yes. Now, this this will be my counter argument to the whole Bolden Fitz Breston thing. Bolden was 28 in the prime of his career. Still, still one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. Fitz was 25, obviously, in the prime of his career. 
and Breston was 25. And they and they didn't go to new teams, right? I mean, maybe Breston. I don't know where Breston played in 2007. Who knows? But I'm pretty sure Bolden and Fitz were already on the Cardinals. So again, also yeah. goes back to the point we have a 30 year old wide receiver switching teams. There's usually a reason why 30 year old wide receivers switch teams, and it's because their previous team is like, yeah, we don't think you're cutting it in. This is true. So, but again, I could totally be wrong. Maybe Diggs will bounce back this year. We can always definitely be wrong, but uh, still not drafting him before round five or six. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not drafting. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Oh well. All right, got uh, two rounds left. Notice you took uh, the Chargers' number one receiver, Josh Palmer. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I thought McConk. I, I, I really have not been uh, paying close enough attention <laughs> to this draft. I thought uh, I thought Lad McConkey was still on the board, but he was long gone. Nope. Oh, okay. Well, that seals it. I, I really don't need another running back, but Kendra Miller was still on the board. But of course, you took him. Get my boy. Yeah, I took. Uh, I am. I don't know. I don't think I call myself a truther, but I do have Lloyd in my barely my top five running backs. So I like Lloyd. That's right. End of this month. No more. The speculation will be over. We will know where all these guys are playing. That's when the fun begins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this is a good point. I would rather, I, I say this all the time, and this includes probably more so in best ball. I'd rather take a swing or a dart throw or a lotto ticket or whatever like metaphor you want to use on a rookie that might land in a great spot or might hit than, I don't know, um, Khalil Herbert or Antonio Gibson or Kenneth Gainwell. It's like, what, what are you getting there? What's your upside? Right. Now, Zeke, now, Zeke, that's a different story. All right, we just got the Justin Fields auto pick, but it's almost the end of the draft, so we'll give him a pass here. Eh, we'll let that one slide, I think. <laughs> it's the end of the draft. You got to look at the big picture back to Buffalo. This isn't just Diggs kind of being unhappy and, you know, maybe losing a step or not or whatever and then moving on. You got to look at the fact mid-year they replaced the offensive coordinator. And then they let Gabe Davis go. And now they're letting Stephon Diggs be traded for a, a draft pick. It's like, you know, there's there's kind of one thing after another here. So you got to wonder what the future of this offense really is. True. I think it's good for James Cook. I think it's probably good for Kincaid. Definitely good for Kincaid. It might not be so good for Josh Allen. We'll see. We'll see what they do, though. I still think still think they have something up their sleeve. I will say, and I think I already had Jalen Hurts over Josh Allen anyways. Um, I, I think Hurts is the number one QB for sure right now. I think I still put Josh Allen a little bit above Lamar. I'm not going to put C.J. Stroud over Josh Allen because C.J. Stroud just does not run in 10 touchdowns. Yeah, that's that's huge. Make a very unexciting pick here. Is Zeke even on a team right now? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think he... Uh... Is he going to be the Dallas Cowboys starting running back week one? 
I mean, at this point, do you see that thing with Derrick Henry? Uh, you know, talk about him maybe being overvalued, but uh, Derrick Henry was like, yeah, that would have been perfect to go to Dallas, but they never even reached out. Like, no interest. Yeah, right. For being what? like, how how all in is this team? They didn't even they didn't even like see what it would cost to get Derrick Henry. Is this part of some master plan where they are going to draft a running back, or are they just like, you know what, we don't need to run the ball. <laughs> I don't I don't know if they have a master plan. You gotta wonder. Ah, oh, nice. The door. That's who I forgot about. Greg George. <laughs> Everybody forgets about Greg about George. It. So, uh, you got Josh Palmer. Quentin Johnson apparently not getting drafted. Nobody has faith. Wow, he didn't even get drafted. Nope. Wow. Hey. I'm not taking them. All right. But here's who we did take. A lot of players. We're going to break down each team real quick and uh, see what we think. Team one is the other John, who's always with us. CMC, DJ Moore, the turn with Etienne, DK Metcalf, Lamar Jackson, Watson, Monty, D-Hop, Ferguson, Charbonnet, Shahid, Troy Franklin, and Jamil Jalil McLaughlin. Uh, I feel okay about this team. Obviously, CMC, great. DJ Moore, okay. Let's just hope they don't actually. There's a lot of talk they're going to draft Odunze, which would be terrible, not only for DJ Moore, but for Odunze. DK, Watson, Monty, D-Hop. I mean, just a lot of guys. I'm like, yeah, they're fine. But not a lot of guys where I look at him and scream, you know, a ton of upside. Yeah, I mean, it's just the receivers. Uh, I, the running back, obviously, you're rock solid. CMC and Etienne. And then Monty is your RB3. Nice. I like Charbonnet's upside. You got Lamar. You got, you know, decent value in Ferguson. But if the receivers, like, more. Okay, we always talk about what. who do you take in that range. I still think DJ Moore is fine there. Metcalf, just like, okay. Watson, uh, and risky. Hopkins, like, okay. Uh, I think you got to replace Hopkins with someone younger in a better situation. Um, so the receivers are just okay. Brian Ibarra um, was looking like a dynasty team up until he got Joe Mixon. So Bijan, <laughs> Waddle, Neighbors, Nodunze, and then Mixon. Deontay, Burrow, Bowers, Brooks, Mitchell, Corley, <laughs> Mitchell, the other Mitchell, and Herbert. So... It's still a very young team. Yeah, this has got to be the youngest team drafted. Um, plenty of upside, but plenty of risk here, right? I mean, if if neighbors or Odunze, like if Odunze goes, as much as I like Odunze, and I think Odunze is such a fantastic player, I mean, if he goes to the Bears, how good can we really feel about him year one? What if neighbors goes to the Giants, which I think is a very high possibility? Don't, don't um, put that on him. <laughs> Brooks coming off ACL. Mitchell, Corley, I like them, but we can't act like there's not risk with them. So this is very, like, high risk, high reward for sure. Yeah. Dynasty, great. Best ball, maybe. Redraft, very risky. Look, if Adunze does wind up getting taken by Buffalo somehow, okay, that's great. But, yeah, like you right. said, just a little too much risk here. Um, Arjun with CeeDee Lamb at HN. There's Josh Allen. Kenneth Walker digs. For the non-stack. And then Addison got the Pitts. Allen Diggs stack. Oh, wait. <laughs> huh? I was going to say, got the Allen Dig stack. And then it's like, oh, wait, no, you didn't. Yeah, the, put them together. That's asking for trouble on the same team. <laughs> uh, Braylon Allen, Corum, and Joku, Myers, and then some picks. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm okay with the first three picks. I don't really like I didn't really like Josh Allen that high when I thought he was gonna have Stefan Diggs. Now I definitely don't like him that high. I think the middle of the draft, it kind of just again, like it just kind of feels okay to me in the middle part of the draft there. Like from picks four on, just not a ton of upside unless you really do believe that CJ Stroud is somehow 
such a massive upgrade over Josh Allen that that's all Diggs needed. Um, yeah, again, I just feel like from picks four on, like the picks are okay, but they don't they just don't scream like upside to me. You know, I feel like it's like with uh, Team One, it's it's the receivers for me. I think running backs, okay, you got upside there, fine. Pitts, I think it's worth the shot where you took him. Josh Allen's still a top quarterback, although I wouldn't take him that early. But yeah, uh, after CD Lamb, it's like we just we talked a lot about Diggs. Obviously, I don't like Addison that early either, to be honest, because it's looking more like it might be Sam Darnold all year. Like that legit might happen. Uh, and then you only got Myers to back him up. So. Yeah, I don't love the receivers here. Definitely could have taken one over Njoku uh, and Fields. All right, Clayton. Let's see what kind of team he built around Ayuk. You got Tyree Kill, Derrick Henry, McBride, Connor, Reed Benson, Brian Thomas, Jordan Love, Leggett, Dotson, Wilson, Zeke to anchor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just realized we had Zeke and Dobbins taken in this draft. Interesting. Um I like. I definitely like the Hill that you start. I think Henry in the third's okay. I think Henry will be fine. I don't like. I don't, like, I don't think he's going to butt or anything. I don't know if he's. I think I would have liked it. I, I think I would prefer. I mean, looking at it now, I mean, I guess you would have had probably been. Stuck. You know, I would almost prefer like a Pittman, a Smith, an Evans, a Debo, a Zay Flowers, I mean, a Kirk, a Higgins, whoever. Pick pick the one you like the most. And then with James Conner just as your RB1, I think I would have liked that better, honestly. Um, and then maybe instead of stacking all the all the rookie wide receivers late for more running backs. But, I mean, Derrick Henry will be fine. I definitely like Conner, although fifth round feels early for him, but maybe not. I do like him. Uh, I'm never going to get Trey Benson again, obviously, in any of these drafts. So... I don't know. I just think if it was like wide receiver over Henry and then Connor and then maybe instead of Jaden Reed, you got well, you still have Benson. Yeah, I think I just would like the team better if you had took one of those upside wide receivers over Henry and then just had Connor as your RB1. Yeah, I mean, I like I'm, I'm totally fine getting those veteran and you have three very veteran running backs and then a rookie in Benson. So it's not that I don't like your running backs. I do. It's just I feel like Henry and Connor are each a little earlier than they should be. I mean, I know Con Henry's probably not getting to you in round four. Connor has right. been going round six, but in this draft, he probably doesn't make it to you. So it's fine. But, uh, yeah, like you said, maybe each of them going a little early could have strengthened your receivers. But I think overall you have a very solid build. And uh, Brian Ibarra, yeah, I get it. I mean, you know, we're, we take guys once in a while. I look, I, I take my share of rookies, but you know, like we're getting like I could, Austin Eckler and Cortland Sutton. They're not the most exciting, but they can still be productive. So you can't just completely go all rookie, you know, late. In the half. Dan, the man, Justin Jefferson at the five still feels like a steal. Laporta in round two had some questions about that. How do you feel about Laporta at the two eight? Yeah, too early for me. I mean, I like Laporta as the tight end one, but in the second round, I, I, and I look, I get it because I talked about it. Like you get to this round and you're like Harrison, Ayuk, Achan, Waddle, DJ Moore, Etienne, Neighbors, Pittman. Like you don't feel like any of them are like slam dunks here. So Laporta might be the surest pick here, but I don't know if he has the, like necessarily the upside of those guys on a week to week basis. I think I'd prefer him much more in the third. But I mean, if, let's say he'd switched like. Pittman at the 2-8 and Laporta at the 3-5. That probably doesn't seem so bad, right? Yeah. If if there wasn't a receiver who got taken before you took Pittman that you had higher than Pittman, then it really doesn't matter. So Laporta are usually not going in round two, but that's exactly what we keep saying. Is just who, nobody really jumps off the page to you like at that stage of the – and maybe you didn't want one of those running backs either. So that's fine. We then got Jalen Hurts. Kamara is the RB1. Zamir is the RB2. Chubb is the RB3. Rico Dattle is the RB4. And then other receivers are Amari Cooper, Romeo Dobbs, Mike Williams, Lockin, and Pearsall. Do you like those running backs? Very risky running backs. Very, very risky. Chubb, we don't even know when he'll be back and how healthy he'll be. Dowdle, do we? I mean, like, I like Dowdle, but do we really think Dowdle, like, the Cowboys are just going to roll in the next season with Dowdle as their running back? I mean, 
I would love it if they did, but I have trouble believing that. But who knows? Maybe. So very risky at running backs. Like I think when you have Jefferson, Pittman, Cooper, you probably don't need Dobbs, William, Mike Williams, Lockett, and Pearsall. Maybe if one or two of those guys was a running back instead, like Chuba, Zach Moss, Pollard or Spears, Gus Edwards. I mean, any of those guys, maybe be a little better. But overall, I think it's, you know, I mean, upside at wide receiver, you got a great tight end, you got a great QB. Running back's just going to be a little lacking, but overall, it's a good team. And we see some people do a bit like this, like, hey, I got the tight end one, and I got the QB one, uh, and I got Jefferson, who could be the wide receiver one. So running back is not going to be my priority. And that actually makes sense, because you hit big on the waiver wire with one guy, or maybe Zeus goes like buck wild and he's the top 10 running back you're good right but um yeah i think it's even though getting chubb in the eighth round as your rb3 seems like a steal it's not the highest upside pick right but he's not going this late in almost any other draft that's not an end game draft i'm gonna guess right all right twisted bliss sun god harrison Devonte, pacheco jones hollywood naji Shakir, who is probably going to see a bump. Chuba, Brock Purdy, Cook Swandale, and Dallas Goddard in the last pick. Uh, easily my favorite team so far. Three good high upside wide receivers. Two solid running backs with decent upside. I mean, I don't love Aaron Jones in Minnesota. It'll be okay. I definitely like Pacheco. I think Najee and Chuba behind them should be solid. They're both, you know, we know... Probably going to be mostly the guys, although we'll see what Arthur Smith does with Cordero Patterson. And then you got Hollywood, Khalil Shakir, Purdy at QB is fine. Goddard, I feel like, is a steal in these drafts. I mean, just getting Goddard in the last round seems good. So I think this is so far is my favorite team. Yeah, I, I think this is good value down the line. Uh, waiting on quarterback, totally fine there. I did the same, waiting on tight end, totally fine. So Really good. Um, by the way, Brian Looper with a quick baseball question. I like Harrison, but I think I can sit him on the road against the Dodgers lineup. So let's let's put him on the bench. All right. Uh, let's go to – you said that was your favorite team so far, but now here's my team. This okay. is Jamar Chase, Devontae Adams, Mike Evans, James Cook, Mark Andrews, Ramondre, JSN and Worthy, Spears, Eckler, Lloyd, Tua – and to Marcus Roberts. Honestly, anybody but Adams, and I would probably say this is my new favorite team. <laughs> anybody, <laughs> like any any of the receivers going at, that went after Adams in the in the second or third round. I just don't. I don't know. I don't see it with Adams. I just don't. But I mean, unless they do something crazy at wide at quarterback in the draft, like either like trade up or, or do something, but I, I think it'll be okay. I just think there's more upside wide receivers there, but I, look, other than that, I think this team is great. I mean, you got chase Adams, Evans cook Stevenson at running back. You got, you got a good tight end, your bench, JSN worthy Spears, Eckler Lloyd. You got that pieces. I think this team is very good. I just think, I don't know if Adams has the upside I'm looking for in the second round person, but that's just me. That's my, just personal feeling. So, yeah, I, I, I it took a while there. I think I was between maybe Ayuk. Again, it still feels a little early. Uh, and then Harrison. So, again, this is just that in between, right? That That's like, who who really belongs there, wide receiver? I think we're going to struggle with that until after the draft. All right. I think so, too. That's second round. You would anchor. Took Brees Hall. And then Olave, Debo, Higgins, McLaurin, Kincaid, the new number one target in Buffalo for now. Javante and Moss, Kyler Murray, Sutton, Palmer, and then Kendry Miller and Dorch. I like it. Um, obviously, you're looking for one of those backup running backs to kind of uh, jump up, but you've got that core at receiver. Uh, I like Kincaid. I know uh, he's going to see a bump as well. I still think that's a good spot to take him. Didn't wait on Kyler Murray. I thought you might wait. If you were waiting in quarterback, you might be able to, You don't think you can get him any later than that? Probably not because once Dak goes off, I mean, now you're looking at – I think Kyler's probably the next guy to go off, and I know Clayton is very high on Kyler, and he had two picks before me, so I wasn't sure about that. 
So I just decided to grab them there. I will say if, if like looking at my team now, when we got to these like round nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, we were like in a lot of discussion. I wasn't really paying a lot of, of attention. Like I should have been, I probably should have taken another running back. I don't really, when you have Olave, Debo, Higgins, and McLaurin, you don't really also need Sutton Palmer and Dorch. <laughs> like you should be good at wide receiver. So probably could have used another running back in there, like, you know, Charbonnet, who I was in my queue, I probably should have grabbed, or even Singletary or, you know, somebody who I could at least kind of feel good about, you know, in case Javante sucks again or, you know, Zach Moss is in a split or whatever it is. So that, that's probably what I would have done differently. Yeah, my one thing as far as being in the middle here, I took the seven year at the eight, uh, is that there were a couple times in the middle portion of the draft, I feel like the entire middle portion of the draft, like round six through nine at least, where everybody I was hoping would fall to me didn't fall. Like just there wasn't great value there. And that just happens sometimes. But yep. uh, overall, I think you got a very, very solid team. And then Ale, no shock, waited on running back well, let's see puka drake london nico in round three talk a lot about him kelsey and mahomes of the stack and then godwin got swift chase brown jalen warren jalen wright jerome ford and tank bigsby with a sprinkle of Devonte wicks uh do you like this running back group for a pretty much your rb team yeah absolutely i mean swift could definitely be the lead back brown warren you know they have that pass catching which gives them value jalen wright could certainly Land in a great spot here. Ford, I feel like, is kind of starting to be slept on the more I think about it. I mean, what have they really done at running back? And if Nick Chubb's not ready, like, you know, Ford was pretty good last year. And, look, we're hearing a lot of buzz. Doug Peterson saying he wants to get Tank Bigsby more involved. Obviously, we talked a lot about Nico. I guess we don't talk about that again. So, yeah, I think for a team that waited till round six for a running back, this is, this is well done, as Ale usually does when he waits on running back like this. Always well done. Uh, and somebody had asked a little earlier about Drake London. Feel like that's too soon on Drake London? I do, but I feel like it's too soon on Chris Olave. I feel like it's probably <laughs> too soon on Marvin Harrison, Brandon Ayuk, Jalen Waddle, DJ Moore. <laughs> like it's just hard. The, the, these wide receivers in like round two and round three, like yeah, I mean, I feel like Pittman and Evan should probably be in the second round, but they're not, mate. You know what I mean? It's just, it just gets tough. It just gets tough in the second and third round at wide receiver for, I mean, all positions really. For some reason, this year it feels like right now. Yeah, the more I try to wrap my head around it, I'll just say I, I, I'll say no. If Drake London was there for me, I, I definitely would have made him my pick there. So I think that's probably the guy I would have at that spot right now. All right. Let's go to Ronnie. Went with Garrett Wilson, Saquon and Jacobs, Cupdell and Stroud. So we've got a little stack there. Kittle, B Rob, Curtis Samuel, Lad McConkey, Singletary Judy, and J.K. Dobbins. I like it up to pick 12. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's fine. Whatever. Um, yeah, I, I think, look, Tank. In the fifth round, as the final Texans wide receiver taken, I'm okay with that. Uh, obviously, Stroud, I think, is fantastic value there. I mean, I, I really might have Stroud over Mahomes, honestly. Wow. And Richardson, just because all the weapons he has. I mean, it's close with those guys, but I might. I'll have to think about it a little bit. It's hard because it just happens. So sometimes you got to, like, go to sleep have a few days and then like, okay, the newness is worn off. Right. And then you can really think about it. Um, so yeah, I really, I like pretty much all these picks here. I mean, I, I don't know if, I don't know if cup is my pick. Like I, I over Higgins or Odunze, maybe even over DK Metcalf, but I think he'll be fine. So overall, I like it. This is those last two picks. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm not drafting JK Dobbins personally, but, or Judy, but overall it's a good no, team. Solid team. Your last pick can't be held against you. Uh, I do feel like I'm going to say this again, and I did say this last year. I don't want to overdraft George Kittle. Uh, it's just so up and down, and who knows? I mean, maybe if Brandon Ayuk does get traded, okay, more targets his way, but 
Yeah, although I guess t- tight end, I feel like, got drafted earlier this time. Maybe the ADP shift has something to do with it, right? We reported in round two, and then we saw, uh, you know, like you took Kincaid in round six. Uh, we had been able to wait on Ingram, but he got taken right after Kittle. We got Pitts also. So I guess tight ends just had a little bit of bump this this draft. Yeah. Okay. Magic Carp, Jameer Gibbs, AJ Brown, Rasheed Rice. Thoughts? Still too early for me, but it's okay. Not the worst, but yeah, a little early for me. Rashad White, Keenan Allen, Anthony Richardson, Evan Ingram, Downs, Pollard, Chandler, Keon Coleman, Jameson Williams, and then a backup court. Yeah, I guess when you have Richardson, a backup quarterback's okay, just in case he gets hurt. But again, there's really not any picks in here that I see where I'm like, oh, I don't like that pick at all. I mean, I'm not a big fan of Keon Coleman, but that doesn't mean he's not going to land in a good spot where he could pay off. So it's fine. It's the 11th round. Like, yeah, I think overall this team got good value pretty much, you know, everywhere. No pick really stands out to me where I think like, oh, you know, I don't like that pick. I feel like the build's pretty good. Maybe could have used one more late running back, but that's about it, really. That's kind of nitpicking here. Yeah, I really don't like the way it ended. Those last three picks I don't like, but that's not the most crucial part of the draft. So I think it's solid. Um, Yeah, I, I like the running backs probably a little bit better than the receivers, but um i think it'll be solid it'd be a contender and then last but not least is them all went with kyron jt at the turn zay flowers christian kirk calvin ridley george pickens moster and then gus with dak prescott as a quarterback a pair of tight ends i guess chig and then hawk um and then demario douglas and marvin mims i mean i like that strategy like taking a tight end and then taking hawk if you're gonna do that I don't know if Chig, I know I was very high on Chig early in the offseason when I didn't think they were going to sign Calvin Ridley and Tony Pollard. <laughs> I've kind of soured on Chig since then because, again, like you got D Hop still there. You got Burks there for whatever that's worth. Now you got Ridley there. You got two pass catching running backs. So, I mean, I would I would have really liked the strategy with like Goddard and Hawkinson, I think would be a great strategy. But I get what you're doing there. I like the strategy. I certainly like. I'm fine with, I think Kyron and JT at the turn is great. And then you get those four upside, those wide receivers all have high weekly upside, which I love. So yeah, I think overall, this is a, a very good team. And I like the way, really like the way you built it. And he had a strategy, went with the two workhorse backs and then took team uh, players that are the number one receiver on their teams, even though they won't, you know, individually be a fantasy wide receiver one. You got Flowers, you got Kirk. I do like Kirk at that value. Uh, Ridley, I think, will technically be the one. Pickens definitely will be the one. So, very nice. Like you said, Goddard. If you had pulled off Goddard and Hawkinson, that would have been pretty sweet. Um, right. Yeah, then you can just ride. One of my top three teams here. I agree. I agree. All right, real quick. JSC wants to know who you got, Jefferson or Chase? I still have Jefferson slightly above Chase. As do I. I landed Chase at the seven, which I'm pretty happy with, but I, I'm taking Jefferson over him too. All right, we'll see who we take next time. We'll be back next week to draft again here on Sleeper. We'll be back again also on Underdog to draft because we're doing best ball every single week. So check it out if you haven't already. Uh, join us if you haven't subscribed yet. Of course, do it, and we'll see you on the next one.